braking is possibly the part of any lap where you can most improve your lap time in F123. You'll spend all of your time either accelerating along straight parts of a track, braking or cornering. Now there isn't too much time to be found along a straight other than optimizing your car setup a little bit, leaving the braking zones and corners as the parts of the track where you should look to find as much lap time as possible. Learning to improve your braking and braking without ABS will always improve your lap time. In this video, I'm gonna run through my top tips on how to race without ABS in F123 and how to improve your braking. Now the first big decision you'll have to make when looking at improving your braking is whether to use ABS assist or not. Real F1 cars don't have ABS, so if you're looking for realism, turn ABS off as this is the best option. It can also be faster and will improve your driving ability. So I'd always recommend turning it off if possible. Now ABS stands for anti-lock braking system and it basically does exactly that. It kicks in when your wheels are about to lock up and it reduces the braking force being applied to prevent them from locking. This will help make braking easier as you won't need to worry about modulating your brake pressure. And this reduces the risk of locking a wheel which can cause you to miss a corner. However, using ABS will slow you down and it can increase your lap time as it will be reducing your brake pressure to avoid locking a wheel, which you won't have control over. I've said it a couple of times already in this video that ABS can slow you down, but depending on your driving style, it can both be faster and slower in F123. In terms of raw pace, a skilled driver will always be faster without ABS. And this is because drivers who can modulate the brake pressure correctly will be able to slow the car faster than with ABS interfering and adjusting the brake pressure in a way which you wouldn't actually do. However, if you are learning F123 or playing a little bit more casually, then turning ABS off can result in locked wheels and lost time and a lot of frustration during braking. In this scenario, turning ABS on can actually improve your lap times and make braking more manageable and ultimately make F123 more enjoyable for you. Now, turning ABS off in F123 is really simple. Simply head over to the assists settings screen and then scroll down to ABS Assist and simply disable it. Now, if you've disabled ABS for the first time and you head out on track, you need to learn why your wheels lock when you're braking without ABS and how to avoid it. If you brake at 100% pressure like you would if you had ABS Assist enabled, as you start to slow down and you're still applying 100% brake pressure, your front wheels can become overwhelmed and if they become too overwhelmed, they'll lock up. This wheel locking will cause your car to not slow down as fast as it should. It will often push you wide, making you miss the apex of a corner, and it'll also wear your tires out faster. And all of those are pretty bad things, so it's best to avoid locking a wheel in F123. Now, there are a few techniques you can use to avoid locking your wheels, even if you're racing without ABS assist enabled. I'll look at each of these techniques in more detail in a minute, but here is a quick summary of how to avoid locking your wheels. Number one, learn the correct racing line. Number two, brake in a straight line at all times where possible. Number three, brake at the correct braking point and try not to brake too late. Four, modulate your brake pressure. Five, you can adjust your brake bias, which changes how much pressure is being sent to the front and rear wheels, which can help in some scenarios. Six, learn to trail brake and use it at almost every corner in F123. And seven, if you're braking in wet weather or in super low grip scenarios, check out cadence braking and try to implement that. Now, the first thing on that list is learning the correct racing line. Knowing when to brake and the correct line to take to a corner will help you improve your speed in almost every area of the corner and help you find lap time. The correct racing line will more than likely shorten your route through a corner, allowing you to brake less and carry more speed. Now the perfect racing line often starts with you on the outside of a track before you move across to the inside to clip the apex of the corner, which is the innermost point of the turn, and then you'll drift back out wide while accelerating. As well as learning the ideal racing line, you should get accustomed to the different parts of a braking zone. Each braking zone is made up of three different parts and you should look to do a specific action or set of actions during each part of the braking zone. 
The first part of almost any braking zone in F123 and any sim racing title is the point at which you start braking. You should almost always apply 100% brake pressure as you look to slow the car down as fast as possible. The second part of the braking zone is where you start to lift off your, your brake pedal. As I just mentioned, if you apply 100% brake pressure continuously, you will almost certainly lock a wheel. This forces you to start reducing the brake pressure as your car is slowing down. Ideally, you'll still be traveling in a straight line as you start to reduce your brake pressure, and you should apply less brake pressure gradually while your car slows to the point where you no longer need to brake. The third part of a braking zone is the point at which you start to actually turn into the corner. You'll almost always still be applying some brake pressure at this point, and this is called trail braking. You'll want to continue to release the brake pressure as you start to apply steering input. With too much brake pressure and steering input together, it will also cause your wheels to lock or for you to understeer and again miss the corner apex. Continue this part of the braking zone until you're no longer braking and you can focus on hitting the apex and optimizing your corner exit. Braking in a straight line in F123 is incredibly important as I've mentioned a couple of times already. The reason for this is that your wheels can only handle so much braking force and steering input before they lose grip and brake traction. A good way to think about it is if you're applying 100% braking force, you'll want zero steering input. And then on the flip side, if you're applying 100% steering input, you'll want zero braking input. And then you should reduce one while you increase the other. So for example, you can start to apply 10% steering input while you're reducing your brake pressure down to about 90%. For example, if you apply 70% braking force and 70% steering input, you'll be exceeding that 100% grip limitation of your tires. And this will almost always result in you understeering or your front wheels locking. Now the term given to the technique of applying both steering and braking input together is trail braking. You're essentially trailing off the brake pressure as you start to apply steering input. This is a fairly advanced technique to really master, but it's one that will save you lap time at almost every corner in F123. Now the goal of trail braking is to keep your tyres working close to that 100% limit that I mentioned. To keep your tyres working close to 100% of their maximum grip, you should look to apply steering input equal to the amount of braking pressure that you aren't using. So if you're braking at 40% pressure, you can apply around 60% steering input. And this won't overwhelm your tyres, but it will use your maximum grip level. This will avoid leaving any grip potential on the table and it will extract the maximum performance available from your tyres. Some of the real key benefits of using trail braking in F123 are that most often you'll be able to brake later into a corner if you're combining the brake and steering inputs together. You'll likely have a faster mid-corner speed as you approach the apex at a faster speed and you're less likely to understeer on the corner entry as you're modulating your brake pressure to help rotate the car. As with most advanced techniques, there are a few easy mistakes to make while trying to trail brake in F123. The main point is to learn from these mistakes and just apply them to the next lap and learn lap upon lap and just practice and practice. Now the easiest mistake to make while trail braking is to apply too much braking and steering input together. This happens when you're still braking too hard while trying to turn too aggressively into a corner. This will generally result in the inside front wheel locking and you understeering and missing the apex. If you experience any wheel locking while turning into a corner, this mistake is quite possibly the culprit. Now, braking too late into a corner is also a really easy mistake to make. Trail braking correctly can allow you to brake a bit later into a corner, however there is always a limit to how late you can brake. If you brake too late, whether you're trail braking or not, you'll normally result in missing the apex and in F123 you can even lock the rear axle and rotate your car and kind of oversteer on the approach to a corner. This will mean you'll have to slow your car down even more to make the corner and it will almost always result in lost lap time. The third mistake is lifting off the brakes too early. When trail braking you don't need to aggressively reduce your brake pressure as soon as you start to apply steering input. All input should be gradual, both steering and brake modulation. If you lift off the brakes too much or too early, you'll find that you may have to actually reapply the brakes to slow your car down. Learning when to start reducing the brake pressure is probably just as key as learning the actual braking point of a corner. And this ultimately comes down to confidence and quite a lot of practice. This is the part of the braking zone where many drivers will lose a little bit of time. 
and those drivers who really master exactly when to start and when to gradually stop braking will almost always have an advantage and be faster. Now getting away from braking techniques, I kind of want to touch on your brake setup a little bit because the brake bias in particular is a real tool at your disposal to help you improve your braking. Your brake bias allows you to distribute how much brake pressure gets sent to the front brakes and how much to the rear. And changing this can have a big impact on how your brakes perform under braking. In F122, for example, everyone ran their brake bias at 50%. And this was kind of a glitch with the game, it's not realistic at all. You'll often find F1 drivers and drivers in other motorsports running their brake bias kind of somewhere between 55 and 60% depending on the track. And thankfully in F123 you kind of have to actually replicate this and run a realistic brake bias setup. Now if you go for a more front focused brake bias, so a higher percentage, so close to 60% for example, this can result in shorter braking zones, especially if you're braking from high speed down to extremely low speed. But what it does do is it puts more pressure on the front wheels, which can increase the risk of locking a wheel and promote a little bit of understeer. If you move your brake bias slightly more rearward, so you can go to 55, 54, in some scenarios even 53%, this will send more brake pressure to the rear of the car and kind of give you a more even brake bias setup. But if you push this a little bit too far, say 52%, maybe 51%, in F123 your rear axle can lock, which will essentially feel like someone's pulled the handbrake on and the rear of your car will start to overtake the front. And this can sometimes result in a full spin or just a really awkward, horrible oversteer moment on the entry to a corner, and it will lose you lap time. A perfect brake bias setup will result in either the front or the rear wheels locking under braking, and it can shorten your braking distance and create a stable car under braking. Now in F123, you can't make many car setup changes between qualifying and the race, but you can adjust your brake bias, and you can even adjust it mid-race as well. You'll often see if you follow a driver on board in real world F1 that they'll be making brake bias adjustments from corner to corner. You'll see numbers flashing on their, on their steering wheel saying 53, 54. And that's because to really optimize each braking zone, you need a slightly different brake bias. Well, you can do this in F123 via the MFD menu or by assigning a button or input on your controller or racing wheel. And it's a practice that once you become more comfortable in F123, I would recommend doing because you will essentially improve each braking zone and really optimize it if you do have the correct brake bias for that specific corner. And that will round out this braking video for F123. I'm hoping the tips that I provided will help you improve your performance during the braking zones, which is one area where you can really find the most amount of lap time. I'd recommend disabling ABS as early as you can and start practicing modulating your brake pressure yourself. This will not only improve your speed over time, but it will also improve your ability as a racing driver and give you more potential to unlock the ultimate pace of your car. Please let me know in the comments below if you liked this video and if you found it actually helpful. Also, if there's anything you're unsure of or anything that I actually missed, let me know in the comments below. Also, consider subscribing if you're liking this F123 content as I've got plenty more planned and plenty more to come yet. But for now guys, enjoy the game and I will see you on track.